Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. My name is Khaldun Nazari. I'm president of this club. I have the honor to moderate this event. We have a very distinguished speaker, Mr. Yoichi Funabashi, chairman of the Asia Pacific Initiative. He will talk today about issues related to the Japanese elections and the aftermath of uh, the, uh, the party's uh, changes of uh, uh, names and uh, affiliations and then returning back to normal. Uh, we don't know what's going on and if you check the, the website of the House of Representatives, you cannot find uh, uh, any information about the strengths of the parties in the parliament. Until today, it has not been decided. So Japanese political parties are not uh, clear yet. And we had a meeting this morning, we had a speaker about the political funds, also the money that is given to some politicians and member of parliament uh, are still up in the air for those who left the Democratic Party and going to the Party of Hope. So the situation is still fluid very much and I think it's timely to have Mr. Funabashi to talk uh, to us and tell us a lot about what's going on and what's uh, the future uh, for the Japanese politics. And uh, Mr. Funabashi uh, uh, has been uh, very much well known in the Japanese uh, uh, circles who, for those who, pol who follow politics and also media. He was a former editor of, uh, and chief of uh, Sahih Shumbun. And uh, he wrote many books, including this book about the Democratic Party of Japan in power. Uh, it's still relevant, and there's a lot of information about it. Ladies and gentlemen, he will talk for about 20 minutes, and uh, after that, we will have a Q&A session. And uh, without further ado, please welcome our guest speaker. Thank you. Well, Carlton, thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I'm very privileged. Uh, <clears throat> given the time, uh, I just would like to focus on a couple of things. But first, reality check. Um, uh, without a doubt, uh, it looks all the more certain. Uh, Shinzo Abe uh, will become to be the uh, longest ever uh, serving prime minister uh, in Japan's uh, modern history. Um, he uh, is very much uh, now fortunate to have a very strong uh, coalition partner, the Komeito, uh, and that this coalition actually has uh, really helped uh, stabilize the uh, Abe politics, and uh, often uh, that uh, prevents uh, Abe uh, from uh, shifting uh, uh, too far uh, right. Uh, so this is a, a key ingredient uh, to uh, the golden formula of uh, uh, the Abe politics. I, I think that uh, if this arrangement uh, will uh, continue, uh, Abe uh, certainly goes the distance until uh, September 2021. Um, and uh, I think perhaps uh, uh, against the backdrop of uh, this radical uncertainty uh, surrounding Japan, international environment, uh, Japan perhaps needs stability, political stability. Uh, and uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, people voted for the continuation of LDP, even though the Abe's uh, uh, popularity rate has suffered uh, uh, to some extent. And uh, uh, according to some opinion polls, Abe's uh, disapproval rate still uh, surpasses the approval rate, even though the uh, majority of the public supports LDP. So, um, the political stability uh, is very much crucial from uh, the public, public's point of view. Uh, uh, Japan really now uh, is faced with uh, uh, twin crises, uh, 
population implosion and uh, uh, North Korea's nuclear and missile uh, program. Um, and on those two accounts, uh, Abe perhaps, well, he already claimed that his political agenda uh, was receiving the uh, public approval. Uh, and he uh, has proven himself that uh, he is uh, uh, making the right calls on those two fronts, um, particularly uh, he made a pledge to uh, increase the budget for the uh, younger generation, uh, childbearing. Uh, he uh, also promised to uh, get the funding uh, for uh, free uh, education for uh, preschoolers. And uh, uh, university students with uh, lower income background uh, from the tax hike. And on the national security policy, um, I think he uh, strengthening of US-Japan alliance and uh, uh, passing the national security bills to allow uh, for uh, the exercising the collective self-defense actually has been validated by the increasing tension on the uh, Korean Peninsula. At least that's how many people have uh, uh, seen the situation and have voted for uh, LDP this time. But at the same time, uh, the Abe's strength actually uh, has been greatly, uh, I think, uh, enhanced by the polarization of the opposition parties. We at the Institute um, published this book, Democratic Party of Java in Power, uh, a couple of years ago, after the DPJ uh, government collapsed. We interviewed more than 30 uh, DPJ political leaders and then uh, tried to critically review what went wrong with DPJ, why they mis uh, failed the way they did. I think that uh, this disintegration process still is underway. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> as you know, the Democrat Party has uh, split it into four groups uh, right now, a hope and the Constitutional Dem Democratic Party of Japan, and independents, and the upper house uh, DP members. So the proliferation of the, Democrat, uh, the opposition parties certainly uh, serve to benefit the ruling party, uh, particularly in uh, Japan's electoral system. Uh, they, do they have enough chance to uh, regain the ground and uh, uh, become to be the ruling party at some point in the coming, in the near future? Uh, I wish they would, uh, because I st strongly believe in that competition uh, in that uh, democracy, particularly the uh, election. But unfortunately, the way they uh, split uh, is not, does not all go very well for the uh, health of uh, Japan's uh, party democra uh, democracy. The uh, democracy uh, in modern times uh, inevitably means that uh, party democracy. Without political party, you just cannot uh, have a, a good uh, function 
uh, in uh, the uh, politics. <coughs> so the uh, slow and atrophy of uh, a party and party system uh, in Japan is not just a mere footnote, but uh, the headline issue of uh, politics. Uh, the main opposition party now is uh, a constitutional De democratic party of Japan, CDPJ, 54 uh, members of a lower house. Even though they are the main opposition party, uh, they are the smallest opposition party uh, since 1955. Uh, but that, uh, the biggest challenge is not just numbers. The problem is the policies. And it's still too early to tell what kind of uh, policy they are really going to formulate uh, in the coming months. But judging from that campaign rhetoric and uh, uh, political uh, leaders of the party, uh, they are very much uh, singularly focused on the constitution, constitutional and uh, security issues. And that's nothing wrong with that. They, they have to, uh, given that enormity of that importance of those two issues. But it seems to me that uh, the new dynamics here, after the split of the uh, DP and the uh, uh, creation of hope, uh, put Japanese policy back to the Cold War era, reversion to that uh, traditional uh, conservative and uh, progressive axis in politics, and the division uh, often hinging on the Constitution and national security policy. And it seems to me that uh, CDPJ's platform uh, is very much still uh, influenced by this old uh, left or uh, right uh, policy uh, debate platform. In other words, uh, they are really now the leftist party, almost resembling uh, similar to the old Japan Socialist Party, even though uh, uh, Mr. Edano, as well as Mr. Fukuyama, emphasized they are not interested right or left. They are only interested in advance, maie, migi demo hidari demo nai, maie. But nonetheless, I think that uh, this party reminds me and many Japanese of that now defunct Japan Socialist Party. Japan Socialist Party was a, a mere uh, pro a protest party. Um, they never contemplated seriously uh, taking power. Uh, they actually uh, were quite content uh, uh, being tasked with uh, mitigating the incumbent party's policies and particularly excess, and which actually appealed to the public, and the public really appreciated uh, on and off this kind of protest party. But we had Democratic Party of Japan only several years ago. They were in power only three years and three months, and they collapsed. So the public still really would like to see viable uh, political party which is capable of ruling the country. 
With that kind of party, you can only have a very healthy, competitive electoral system. Without the party which has an ambition and a capacity, capability to come back to the power, I do not think that pa party will serve the public very well. What about hope? I think uh, uh, Ms. Koike uh, uh, appear to be overzealous in policing the ideological commitments uh, from the uh, new recruits of the uh, DP, Democratic Party. And it was a fatal mistake, and it backfired. But more than that, I was troubled to hear Ms. Koike arguing that she indicated uh, almost that hope would not run candidates against Prime Minister Abe's rivals in LDP, such as Ishiba Shigeru or Noda Seiko. And then a subsequent announcement uh, that the uh, objective of this election, from her point of views, was not to unseat the LDP, but to unseat Abe. This really appeared to turn the election into personal vendetta. So after all, Ms. Koike uh, looks more populist than that responsible mainstream political leader. And I think that perhaps uh, she also has a very much strong proc proclivity to be populist and movement. Uh, very much passionate for charisma uh, and a strong uh, leadership vision of politics. But she failed in translating the populism on the local level into the national level. Not dissimilar to Hashimoto Toru's failed attempt to translate that populism on the local level to that national level. So um, even though we have seen uh, stronger voices of populism and uh, uh, some politicians turning into a populist. Nonetheless, it has been confined in Japan to the local level. And on the national level, I think that we do not have that uh, populist movement as we have seen in uh, Anglo-Saxon countries as well as some Europe continental European countries. At the same time, uh, Abe's policy and politics, uh, political focus, has left that uh, young people in cities unrepresented. Um, Japan actually, in many uh, points, very much different to Europe and America. Uh, in terms of uh, who is underrepresented or who is unrepresented in politics. The forgotten ones 
uh, in the United States and the UK, a typically uh, middle-aged, low-income, high school graduates living in rural areas. But in Japan, it is rather the youth uh, in cities who have been left behind. And Abe uh, actually has, as I said, tried to reach out now belatedly uh, to this group. Uh, and uh, it is very much now uh, interesting to see how the younger ones actually uh, voted, uh, particularly that uh, for that 18 years old, 19 years old, uh, this, was the this was the first time for them to vote uh, in the uh, lower house election. Uh, and 52% uh, of this group uh, voted for uh, the uh, LDP. Uh, so uh, I, I think that it's lopsided the uh, very much uh, <coughs> pro-LDP uh, group now emerging. Uh, I don't know how uh, lasting uh, this tendency will be, but uh, perhaps uh, uh, because of the good job uh, market prospect, uh, and perhaps that's uh, Abe Shinzo uh, is the only politician they have known because Abe has been in power for more than five years, almost five years. So this is uh, uh, a very, uh, I think, uh, new, uh, uh, interesting uh, phenomenon that, uh, that we are now witnessing. Uh, Trump is coming to Japan uh, next month, uh, and Abe certainly uh, is in a very much strong position. I was told that uh, Trump telephoned Abe yesterday, day before yesterday, I'm sorry, and congratulated uh, him and, uh, without prior uh, notice. He just telephoned, and he, they just chatted for 30 minutes. So um, I think... Uh, Abe's uh, ultimate strength of uh, Abe is, uh, and which uh, won uh, over the uh, public, uh, is, is, is his unrivaled ability to manage the U.S.-Japan alliance. Um, certainly, uh, that very close relationship with Trump uh, may represent the uh, Abe's largest risks, political risks, in the long run. Uh, but uh, uh, among all the political leaders, uh, Abe perhaps uh, pr uh, probably has the uh, best uh, personal rapport uh, with uh, Trump. Uh, <coughs> so uh, in this election, uh, that uh, close relationship uh, was Abe's uh, prized asset, and it's really worked. So I think I should stop here, uh, and I'll be uh, delighted uh, to uh, uh, answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very good insights. You kept us very busy taking notes. <laughs> I would like to open the floor to your questions, and uh, please proceed to the front mic and introduce your name and affiliation. Isabel, please. Uh, Isabel Reynolds from Bloomberg News. Um, I have two questions. One's about the Constitution. Um, what do you think Abe's chances are of actually changing the Constitution? And what would be a good um, point in time for him to tackle that, do you think? Um, also, uh, on the question of Donald Trump, um, there was a Pew, a Pew survey out a few days ago that showed um, Japan's view of America had, had fallen enormously since Donald Trump came to office um, and approval ratings for him were way lower than for Obama. Under these circumstances, why is it such an asset for Abe to be friends with Trump? Thank you. Um, 
I think uh, uh, with regard to the prospects of Abe's uh, uh, proposal to uh, revise the Constitution, uh, in particular Article 9, I think uh, uh, the chances still is very much a slim. Um, I would say it will not happen uh, over the next three, four years. Uh, certainly, that this is, I, was, uh, uh, I think, uh, biggest passion uh, to uh, revise the Constitution. Abe, at one point, called that a current post-war Constitution not beautiful, uh, ugly. So somehow he has uh, uh, developed some uh, kind of personal animus against that. Uh, but uh, I think uh, more uh, uh, on a more sober note, uh, people uh, also uh, understand and appreciate it is time to really critical review. This current constitution really matches the times and needs. Uh, and that uh, it's very much legitimate uh, for the public to uh, raise the questions as well as our political leaders. And I think that this has gradually, I think, uh, laid the ground uh, for that uh, serious discussions about the uh, revisions. And I think it's very healthy. It's very, it has, uh, I have seen very much healthy, uh, lively discussions about that. Uh, but on the question of Article 9, Abe and LDP has to compromise uh, on the draft uh, or revised version with that uh, particularly the uh, main opposition party, okay? Because it's not the government uh, uh, initiated uh, enterprise. It has to come from the uh, legislative body, parliament. And that uh, LDP and Comate or coalition simply cannot impose uh, uh, their versions on the others, even if they enjoy more than two thirds super majority. But uh, given that the current position taken by that uh, CDPJ, I think it would be extremely difficult for both the coalition uh, uh, parties and the CDPJ to uh, compromise. And I think that the more uh, the LDP other government will forcefully uh, push for that, the more uh, forcefully that FDP, CDPJ will resist. And it perhaps would polarize that, uh, uh, that opinion. So even if they would uh, uh, force uh, the uh, version, uh, revise the version uh, in the parliament and pass that with super majority. I think that by that time, the public will be very much split and polarized, and perhaps that the people will very much be concerned about that ensuing negative effects of polarization. At that end of the day, they may say no, they vote no. So I think that very, very uh, 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 challenging for that other government uh, to uh, revise the constitution. Uh, on the second question, Trump's popularity is very low uh, els elsewhere here too, and why Abe's close relationship with Trump is such a prized asset. Uh, yes, Trump is very much unpopular. Uh, but, uh, uh, and he uh, could pose a serious, uh, uh, I think, risks to uh, Abe and Japan and elsewhere because uh, uh, he does not uh, uh, respect, he does not seem to respect uh, 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 and also uh, uphold the rule-based uh, world order as well as the regional order he abandoned on TPP. He now is trying to destroy NAFTA. Uh, he forced uh, South Korea to renegotiate chorus. So, uh, 
And now on um, Paris Accord and Ir Iranian nuclear agreement. So uh, who actually anyone, you know, I, I don't know why anyone would want to uh, make an agreement with the United States given this, you know, uh, track record. Nonetheless, I think that United, the president of the United States uh, is elected by the American voters. And he's the one that any political leaders in the world has to deal with. And the United States voice and leadership is indispensable as ever against the backdrop of Korean Peninsula and China's very much aggressive uh, uh, policy towards maritime issues and the others. So I think that it is very much uh, uh, important for a political leader to uh, establish a good working relationship. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Abe's gamble uh, on Trump uh, when he uh, visited, he went to New York to meet with Trump even prior to the inauguration. I think was now paying off, in my view. Thanks. Yes. Okay, L let me ask about uh, China now. It seems that the Chinese leader, Jinping, is boosting his power, and he's becoming uh, like solo leader. He puts himself on the same line with Mao Zedong and the other leader. So how do you think this will impact Japan and the regional issues, especially in the South and East China Sea? Thank you. Um, there have emerged some troubling uh, points about uh, the rise of Xi Jinping. Uh, much more illiberal uh, political uh, regime is now emerging. Uh, and uh, China's uh, power, new power, driven by uh, digital protectionism and uh, this immobility, political immobility and uh, autocracy cemented and consolidated by this digital Leninism is actually really uh, worrisome. And uh, Japan certainly uh, still has serious disputes uh, over the islands with China. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Japan and China has now overlapping interests, uh, such as uh, to uh, contain the uh, North Korea's uh, nuclear and missile uh, challenge, <coughs> and uh, how to eventually uh, settle that North Korean, uh, Korean Peninsula question. Um, so I think we have to be very realistic. Um, and uh, Xi Jinping is the leader you have to deal with. And I think perhaps, uh, uh, diplomatically speaking, uh, with that much stronger hand in China, it could be a little bit uh, uh, more uh, conducive for Japan and China uh, to uh, take next steps and bottom out from this ground zero relationship since that uh, Senkaku I tell you uh, territorial issues uh, erupted in 2010 as well as 2012. Uh, Chinese diplomats, uh, functionaries, have been extremely risk averse, particularly when it comes to dealing with Japan. Uh, Chinese General Secretary Hu Yaopan 
uh, was ousted from power in the power struggle uh, in late 1980s. And one of the crime uh, that he was indicted politically was his too much closeness to Japan. He was the one who uh, pushed for that uh, youth exchange program between Japan and China in early 1980s. And uh, 3,000 young people, uh, Japanese, were invited uh, to China. And uh, they lived together uh, in a boat uh, for some time. Uh, former DPJ uh, chairman, uh, Prime Minister Kan Naoto was one of them, young Japanese who are invited to this boat exchange program. But that was one of the uh, uh, crime uh, he actually committed uh, when he was ousted. So uh, in China, particularly in Chinese, Chinese uh, Chongnan high politics, uh, any effort to reach out Japan has been regarded as a cautionary tale. It's too risky. It's too politically radioactive. So it, you really, it really requires a very robust, strong leadership uh, to overcome this uh, risk averseness on the part of functionaries. And we have not seen that in the past 10 years or so. So I, I genuinely hope that Abe and Xi Jinping, perhaps that two strong political leaders, the strongest perhaps uh, in the past 20 years, uh, will be able to reach consensus. And I think the first uh, attempt should be to uh, have the two leaders uh, visit, visit uh, the other countries respectively, uh, maybe uh, hopefully in the same year, next year. And uh, I think both are now uh, trying to work out uh, this plan. I don't know at this point whether it will happen or not. But I hope that it will happen. Thank you. Uh, my name is Hiroyuki Fujita, freelance. Last week, I uh, visited DC and called on the residents of the uh, former Chief Commander of Pacific Fleet, James A. Lyon. I'm sure you know. James? James A. Lyon. No, I see. But anyway, uh, he was a Pacific Fleet uh, Commander in Chief uh, during the Reagan administration. And I talked with him, and I got the impression that uh, strong America and strong Japan can maintain the security in the Asian region, just like a wrong yes relationship. What's your comment on along this line of argument? Well, oh, even I, even though I said that it's good for. Japanese political leader and the American political leader have a good working relationship. But I would not suggest that that working relationship be too much closely intimate one. It does not necessarily have to be intimate. Uh, and uh, uh, because uh, we still don't know yet uh, what the Trump administration's Asian policy and trade policy will fare out. Uh, judging from the, uh, what they have been trying to do in the past uh, eight months, nine months, actually uh, are some worrisome. Uh, for instance, uh, they uh, scrapped, uh, withdrew, I should say, uh, from TPP. Uh, if they don't like TPP, <laughs> then what is the alternative? Um, they have never put forward uh, the alternative in a convincing way. At one point, 
they mentioned on the need to uh, forge U US Japan free trade agreement, bilateral. The Japanese government uh, is uh, very much reluctant uh, to uh, negotiate with the U United States in this formal uh, FTA setting. So if the US would adamantly insist uh, that US-Japan bilateral FTA, perhaps at one point Japan would say no, okay? Then what would happen? Then you really need a good working relationship. It's not just, you know, uh, good uh, chemistry, uh, it's not a good sentiment. Uh, it's a really hard-nosed, uh, uh, well-measured, composed, uh, well-calculated uh, 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 policy. That's, imp that's required, right? And uh, have we established that kind of re relationship? We'll see. If a Trump administration does not like Obama's rebalancing strategy, that is basically is a comprehensive agent strategy, then what's alternative? They did not elaborate, they did not articulate at all yet. Perhaps that when uh, President Trump uh, visits uh, Asia this time, next month, he will visit five countries. He will make two speeches, perhaps in Seoul, uh, in Korea and in Vietnam, he perhaps will uh, very much articulate his vision, the Trump administration Asia policy. Okay, I genuinely hope that he will. Okay. So uh, I think that Japan and the United States still has a lot of uh, work to be, to get done, uh, and uh, just. A good rapport and a good relationship between two political leaders is not uh, sufficient enough. Siegfried Niedl, freelancer from Germany. You talked about a compromise in the paragraph nine that is necessary. So how could you explain or uh, show us what kind of compromise would be acceptable, also not only for the parties, for different parties, but also for the public? That I don't know. I think it's up to them. <laughs> <laughs> My name is uh, Chong Hwan Kim. I just arrived from Seoul to attend this press conference. <laughs> uh, how do you expect uh, the relationship between Japan and Korea after this uh, election winning by Abe, Prime Minister Abe, <laughs> uh, Prime Minister Abe winning this election will affect, how will it affect Korea and the Japan relationship, because Korea is uh, still building a statute of uh, comfort women and uh, labor forces around, even trying to around the world. So how do you uh, assess it? Thank you. Um, <laughs> I think it's very much uh, important for Japan and uh, <coughs> Korea uh, to uh, work much more closely uh, because uh, we have a very much uh, strong uh, interests, uh, overlapping interests in common, particularly with regard to the how to deal with North Korea's uh, nuclear and missile uh, threat. Uh, and also how to get the United States uh, deeply uh, committed to this region uh, and how to actually uh, prevent, uh, restrain, I should say, China from 
resorting to blatantly that geoeconomic hard treatment with our neighboring countries, such as uh, the uh, boycott of Rote uh, in China. Um, so um, I think uh, judging from uh, the uh, conversation between President uh, Moon Jae-in and Prime Minister Abe, I think the uh, initial uh, rapport actually has been very much uh, uh, good. Um, there are some people, uh, more conservative side, who actually are very much concerned about the advent of the left-wing uh, administration uh, in South Korea yes. uh, because uh, uh, they uh, their first instinct is to uh, be reminded of Nomushon days when Japan and our ROK relationship really radically started to worsen. Uh, but I think that uh, now they uh, feel a li little bit more relaxed because uh, uh, President Moon Jae-in is much more center, uh, much more realistic uh, outlook, even though as you mentioned, that comfort women issues uh, actually has been uh, revived. Uh, and to some Japanese and, uh, and uh, policy makers particularly, that is now seen as a, uh, once again for South Korea to move in the goalpost, quote unquote. Uh, but I think that uh, even though the Japanese government would not uh, uh, engage in renegotiating uh, on that issue. But I think that uh, uh, given that strategic imperative, uh, I think Japan, uh, Japanese government, I think will redouble their effort to stabilize the relationship with South Korea. Thank you. Do you expect that the coalition military power can destroy the North Korean uh, strategic uh, uh, nuclear power, nuclear arms, missiles? Would you ask the question? Okay. Do you think uh, uh, the coalition among the US, Japan, Korea, and the uh, United uh, UK and Australia, they ca can they, uh, you think, uh, they could destroy all the nuclear armament missiles of North Korea. I don't think it will happen. Uh, I don't think uh, a military option is viable, uh, actually, because uh, the casualties uh, and the collateral damage would be too great uh, for any military actions to be uh, uh, rationalized and uh, legitimatized, in my view. Uh, certainly, the uh, nuclear weapon state North Korea will keep posing serious uh, security risks to all of us. And even then now, the United States has, it has uh, the United States drawn to that uh, similar uh, threat zone. So we are now nakedly all exposed to that uh, existential threat from North Korea. Uh, so uh, we must be prepared for uh, any contingency uh, scenario. But that's one thing. Uh, but uh, it is quite another to argue that uh, we should strike militarily North Korea, uh, all three countries uh, together proactively. I don't think uh, it will happen. I don't think it must happen. So my answer is no. Thank you very much. Linda Siegfried Reuters. 
Thank you. <laughs> I'd just like to go back to your uh, comment about uh, seeing the Constitutional Democratic Party uh, reminding you of the Cold War era Socialist Party. Uh, are, so are you saying that, uh, at the same time you're saying that, um, you know, an opposition party that is, is capable of competing with the LDP to take power is, is vital for Japanese democracy. Are you saying that any opposition party needs to be uh, not center left, but center to center right to compete with the LDP, but then on the other hand, that seems to be what uh, Governor Koike was trying to do, sort of I imitate the LDP in many of its uh, her policies, and yet it didn't go over too well uh, with the public. So what sort of opposition party do you foresee? And secondly, uh, you mentioned that the uh, CDP P seems to be focusing on the Constitution, which I agree, but are they not also focusing not just on Article 9, but other elements of the Constitution that the LDP would like to change, uh, including you know, the protection of uh, fundamental human rights? Okay. That's a good question. Uh, thank you very much for the uh, questions. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I think that uh, I think Japan still needs cons uh, to, to consolidate that opposition party into a uh, uh, major viable opposition party to be able to contend with the ruling party uh, and give a clear uh, choice uh, uh, option and alternative to the uh, voters. Uh, but at the same time, it has to be a very realistic, uh, viable one. And uh, I'm also uh, worried about that uh, CDB, uh, CDPJ's uh, uh, policy, which uh, is very much uh, focused on the uh, uh, opposed to consumption tax hike whilst uh, arguing for raising the social spending. Uh, this really reminds me of that, this DPJ's manifesto wish list approach uh, to uh, the uh, uh, policy requirement. In other words, to put it in other words, that it's economic populism. So they have to overcome this e economic populism too. Uh, on the question of Article 9 um, and, and other uh, 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 constitutional revisions, uh, you are right. I think uh, they actually made a very good point. Uh, human rights, uh, transparency, and some kind of uh, constraints on the prime minister's prerogative to uh, call for the general snap election. I think that's all very much legitimate points, and I think it's very helpful. But at the end of the day, their passion uh, and their streak is singularly on that uh, Article 9, particularly that uh, right of uh, collective self-defense. So um, the way they frame that national security policy is constructed uh, almost solely by constitutionality question. I think that they really need to elaborate their po uh, national security policy on its own merits. Uh, and that's a, one of the uh, major uh, reservations I still make uh, with this party, even though I really appreciate, I give a lot of credit to them uh, to try to articulate their position and uh, try to present a differentiation products from the LDP. Uh, whereas uh, Ms. Koike's hope has failed in doing so. Uh, Ken Joseph with Ga uh, Gatestone. Um, one of the puzzles uh, for a lot of Japanese over the, for many, many years is why um, the, uh, getting back to the election, why the LDP always seems to win elections over and over and over again. And 
Um, I grew up here, so I've often had the conversation with people. They say, well, I didn't vote for them, and neither did my friends, and how come they keep getting elected? So one of the, um, recently there was uh, two UN rapporteurs have been to Japan recently, and both of them have been extremely critical of um, pretty major corruption uh, in the media as well as the government. And Dartmouth College just did a uh, recent survey on uh, how the corruption is done in the elections. And I'm just wondering if you've ever heard of um, this they uh, apparently adjust the registration system, and there's a very pretty organized uh, system that keeps putting them back into power. And then finally, the Supreme Court just uh, ruled again for I think the fourth, third or fourth time that the uh, two per, it's almost two votes for one disparity in the voting. Um, have you ever heard of the uh, corruption election? And then um, what degree that could have even in this, what's re most recently happened. It almost seems like a, an organized attempt to um, destroy the opposition. So I just want, if you have any background on that, thank you. Two UN rapporteurs have, have just come within the last couple of months and both have been very, um, very clear on major corruption, both in the media as well as government. <clears throat> Supreme Court uh, <coughs> uh, decision has to be respected. And I think that's very organizing slow for uh, the ruling party as well as opposition party uh, to respond to uh, this uh, <coughs> requirement. Uh, and it's a pity. But at the same time, it's very much uh, interesting twist here. Uh, given this disparity uh, of uh, uh, weight of one vote uh, between rural areas and metropolitan areas, actually has uh, mitigated that uh, mitigated that uh, populist uh, impulse, uh, <coughs> which uh, is usually uh, caused and triggered by a uh, rural area and the low income area. And uh, uh, high school graduates constituencies, as I mentioned. Uh, the very fact that the rural area voters are overrepresented at the expense of the uh, city dwellers actually has uh, helped Japan stave off that uh, populist uh, uh, streaks. Uh, so you have to also take into account that kind of aspect. Uh, I was very much intrigued to read Jillian Tet's uh, essay, which just came out in FT uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she was writing about uh, a funeral of uh, Mr. Onogi, uh, former president of a long-term credit bank, uh, who was uh, uh, put, put to jail, in jail. Uh, for the implication of the uh, uh, non perfume loan scandal. And actually, he was acquitted. Uh, and his deputy committed suicide. Um, there was no pension uh, for them. Uh, they reduce their bonuses and salaries uh, by half uh, and even more. Uh, and this really uh, was a result of a poor management and uh, incompetence, inco perhaps, on the part of Japanese bankers throughout the 1990s. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this actually has uh, uh, given a sense of fairness to the Japanese public. 
And he actually compared this uh, saga and uh, predicament of Japanese bankers uh, with that uh, counterpart, their counterparts in Wall Street. Nobody, no major bankers in the Wall Street was ever put to trial. Nobody was criminalized. And most of them still have enjoyed exorbitant salaries and bonuses. No wonder, you know, 1% versus 99% movement uh, actually uh, took place. Th that this is her argument. I think that's very, very, I think, uh, intriguing one. Uh, so um, you need a perspective. Uh, and that's uh, very much intriguing, in my view. Well, thank you very much, Professor Fundapashi. This wraps up our event today. It was very uh, insightful, and we got a lot of quotes from you. I would like to give you one year honorary membership to our club. Oh, thank you. Please come again and tell us more. And the right to work. Thank you very much for coming today.